Hello and welcome to Iridium Rock and Metal Reviews. Um, so, I just want to say a quick thanks to everyone um, who's posting some excellent comments to me below my videos. Um, really appreciate it. Appreciate how everyone's getting involved in um, giving me some new stuff to listen to as well. So, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, I just want to say cheers, everyone. Um, I'm just going to do... Uh, 2003 so I'm going to rank the year 2003 as you know by now if you've been watching the channel um, I list my favourite albums of that year uh, it's not the most successful albums it's not the most technically um, brilliant albums or anything like that it's just my favourites um, and, and it's like that it's no right or wrong about what's the best one it's just what you know means the most to me so I've got five uh, for 2003. Not a bad year at all. Got a few honourable mentions as well. They weren't going to make it into my top five, but they, you know, they're not too bad and they will definitely be in other people's um, favourite albums. So from number five, so obviously this is the least favourite of the my best albums from that year. Um, number five, first time they've appeared on the list, Dream Evil and Evilized. Really like this album. This is my favourite album by Dream Evil. Um, a band from Sweden, if you don't know. They've got connections with Gus G, who uh, play, uh, who he's in Firewind. So, you know, they've got a lot of pedigree. Um, this album is brilliant, though. They are... It's on the right border of heaviness with really catchy uh, songs as well. Catchy verses, catchy choruses... But really heavy, you know, real chugging riffs. Love this album. Easily my favourite one from Dream Evil. Um, so the only thing that puts me off a little bit with Dream Evil is the lyrics. They sort of, some of the lyrics are a bit silly. Um, in the way of, you know, they, they talk about like fighting, like Vikings and stuff like that. And... And metal is the, like, you know, I don't know. It's just like when Steel Panther fuck about with lyrics, they do it to the extreme where you know it's like ridiculous. Dream Evil sort of, they sort of muck about with it where you really don't know if they mean it or not. You know what I mean if, if you know the band, but you don't know whether to laugh or they're being serious. I'm not really sure. I'm, I re really don't know. Um, but. You know, that, this is a really good album, though. So my favourites on here, Break the Chains, Evil Eyes is a great a great song. Children of the Night, really catchy. Fight You Till the End is another good one. I'll give Dream Evil, Evil Eyes, 8 out of 10. Right, my number four. These ain't been on the list for quite a while. Anthrax, and we've come for you all. Brilliant album, this. John Bush on vocals. For me, my favourite Anthrax album with John Bush on vocals. A um, bit more commercial, I'd say, this album. Obviously, definitely more commercial than old Anthrax. Um, and even maybe the newer stuff as well. There's some real like catchy stuff on it, especially the, the single Safe Home. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers it. actually had Keanu Reeves in the video. Really love that one. Really catchy. Uh, some other heavy ones on here. What doesn't die is a good one. Taking the music back. Um, Superhero is a really good song. This had track after track, really solid songs, and definitely a metal album. Not a lot of thrash about it for me. I thought it was more metal, um, in my opinion. Uh, but I really like this one. Um, and I'll give it eight out of ten. Number three, second time they've appeared on my list. Firewind, Burning Earth. This was the last album from my favourite Firewind vocalist, um, Stephen Frederick. And this was as good as this was as good as the album before it, Between Heaven and Hell, I think it was called. Um, along the same lines, the heaviness with the catchy stuff, not on the like the real happy side of the uh, power metal, but you know, real bruising stuff. I think this is where I preferred them to Dream Evil. There wasn't any of this, the lyrical content as well wasn't muck, you know, it didn't sound like they was joking. Um, but that, I don't know, this, 
these these two albums between heaven and earth and burning earth really between heaven and hell and burning earth were really good really loved them my favorites on here still then blind immortal lives young brilliant tune you have survived uh brother's keeper probably my favorite song on the album probably my favorite firewind song the riff on that is amazing really catchy riff straight from the beginning when it kicks in with the lead guitar as well love it absolutely love it i really wish they'd carried on with stephen frederick but like i said in my burn in my firewind their new album review they've got a vocalist now very similar traits to him so i'm loving it at the moment that's good i'll give firewind burning earth also eight out of ten right my number two maiden iron maiden dance of death love this album i think it's weird when this album came out i thought a lot more of it then i really got into it i went to see him live on that tour um for the first time for years and really got involved with maiden again huge absolutely huge i think out of their newer stuff this is slightly off the boil a bit I prefer some of the other albums they bought out since Bruce and Adrian in back, back in the band, but this is still such a strong album. I mean, it's Maiden for fuck's sake. It's going to be strong in it. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, don't matter what they put out, it's brilliant. You know, so much, um, so much intelligence in this on this on this record. Uh, some things that other bands could only dream of doing. Do you know what I mean? Some real. You know, they've got a couple of really catchy ones on it. Age of Innocence, what a catchy song that is. Rainmaker also. But where they really push themselves, Maiden, where they're at their best is when in that when they go epic. And that's Dance of Death, Passion Dow as well. Passion Dow is probably my favourite tune on this album. I'll give Iron Maiden Dance of Death 9 out of 10. So my number one. Don't know if anyone's actually thinking I might choose this one. But Master Plan by Master Plan. Nothing to do with that shit band Oasis, by the way. This is uh, the German metal band consisting of a couple of Halloween members. Um, and they got vocalist Jean Londe to perform on here. And he's one of my favourite vocalists in heavy metal at the moment. So it was a, it was going to be a winner from the start. Um, so if no one's heard this album get it absolutely get it this is absolutely brilliant the vocalist on here john londe you know what i mean he's he's matched really by the musicianship on this album the guitar and he's absolutely out of this world um some real amazing songs on here really again really catchy on the melodic side of uh power metal um kind-hearted kind-hearted light is amazing song enlighten me crystal night and what a closer this this album the closer when love um comes close which closes out the album i remember when i first heard this song uh, it was when i was first listening to some john londe stuff and he's like on this song he's like a mix he's like covered out at his best with a little taint in the do there as well honestly if you haven't and i know you guys are metal fans. You're listening to this channel. You know what you're talking about. And you've probably heard all this Sean Londe stuff. But if you haven't, and sometimes things can slip by, you know what I mean? They have for me through the years. Honestly, get some stuff with Sean Londe singing. Whether it's his solo stuff, whether it's master plan, wherever it is, get it. Because you can, his, his vocals alone makes you love it. A bit like Dio used to superb absolutely superb and i'll give master plan master plan nine and a half out of ten yeah just nearly got there on the ten there's a couple of tunes that not one of the faster ones that i weren't too keen on but near enough there nine and a half out of ten honorable mentions quickly um avenge sevenfold waking the fallen i got into this album not as much as i did on their later stuff i thought their later stuff was better so that's why it didn't hit my honorable mentions it was a bit too extreme for me the vocals on a lot of it black label society the blessed hell ride probably black label society's favorite album of mine um where i, I think with zach wild he's a great guitarist one of the best guitarists in the world in my opinion 
I think he just needs to improve on the songwriting a little bit. Otherwise, he would probably be in a lot of my lists. Deftones. Deftones. Their, their self-titled album. Slip back a bit here for me. Uh, from White Pony. Um, didn't quite hit the mark on this. I don't know. It was just a bit too samey for me, this one. They hit some better albums later, but this one's a bit of a disappointment for me. Um, Linkin Park, Meteora. Yeah, you know what? Even though the Hybrid Theory was such, such a classic album, I went off of Linkin Park quite quick. I thought Meteora was like a replica, really, of Hybrid Theory. It's strange, isn't it? Because then later on in their career, they went and done something completely different, and I wasn't too happy about that. I suppose some bands can never win with fans, can they? Yeah, but uh, some of the, I like some of the songs on Meteora, without a doubt, and obviously the musicianship and... Chester Bennington's voice is spot on, like it was, you know, all the way through his career until he died. But uh, it didn't make it into my honourable mentions, I'm afraid. So that's it, 2003 done. Might do a reaction tomorrow, might do another year, not sure yet. But I'm really glad you guys are joining in, um, contributing some stuff to the channel and putting some comments in. We really appreciate it, love reading your comments. Uh, if you want to subscribe, if you haven't yet, Bottom right hand corner, click the red button, subscribe. Thank you very much.